Well, good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to my workshop. It has been a while since we've been here together. Today, I'd like to talk to you about alternative power for items that aren't USB compatible. A lot of us carry backup battery supplies and stuff like that for charging our cameras, for batteries, for tablets, iPads, stuff like that for when they run out of power and there's not AC power available to us. Well, a lot of the devices that my kids use and some that I use aren't directly USB compatible, but there is a way around that as long as that device is based off of a 5 volt charging system. So let me show you a quick and easy way to convert that power over to USB. Alright guys, this is basically what you're going to need for this project, but first, why is this of benefit? Well, my camera personally, the camera I'm filming on right now, it is not USB compatible, but it is 5 volts. Uh, my kids have a lot of, you know, a Leapfrog Explorer thing, and Nintendo this, and that, you know, a lot of devices that they use to entertain themselves, you know, whether they're in the car or at home, um, that are not USB compatible. But when it's switched over to USB, if, you know, the power's out or we're out and about, and we don't have AC recharging capabilities available to us, I can throw up a quick solar panel or I can plug it into a backup uh, battery supply like this and go ahead and get their device going and keep them entertained or you know keep filming on uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that. So anyway, this is what we're gonna need for this project. You're gonna need the original power adapter, which this is the power adapter to the camera I'm filming on right now. You're going to need an old USB cable. This is for my old iPhone 5. I haven't used it in over a year. I'm hoping the wiring is compatible for what I'm doing today. If it's not, I do have another USB cable handy. You're going to need a voltmeter. This is not mandatory, but I highly recommend it. Obviously, you're going to need a backup power supply of some kind. You're going to need some bullet connectors. These are available at uh, Walmart, basically any auto parts store, something like that. They're extremely cheap. I believe I paid around two, two and a half bucks for these, and this is more than what you will need. And you'll need a multi-tool or wire crimper, something like that. So let's get started, guys. Now, what we're doing today is allowing us to use both USB and your regular AC wall adapter on the same connector. That's what these bullet connections are for. So what you want to do is leave yourself enough play on your lead that you have room to work with it on both ends. Go ahead and cut it. Okay, so now that we've cut it, go ahead and set that aside for right now. What we want to do is take your AC wall adapter side and go ahead and split these cables apart. and just peel them back. They are typically designed to separate easily like this. What you want to do is take your wire strippers, a knife, whatever, just gently cut around the insulation of each wire and pop out a quarter to a half inch of raw copper. Go ahead and twist those up so they don't fray out on you. Now we're going to want to do the same thing to the actual plug inside. Go ahead and plug your power adapter back in and test your cable. Well guys, I felt the need to come back and give a quick safety warning here. In a lot of this video you see me handling bare copper wire that does have electricity running through it. That is because that is 5 volts DC. Much like using a 9 volt battery, you can touch it to your skin and it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't have the current or the voltage to break through your skin and actually hurt you. Do not ever do what you saw here today with any cable you are not familiar with. If you inadvertently do that with AC electricity, you will probably kill yourself. So, just a quick safety warning. Only do it with a voltage and current that you're very familiar with and you know for a fact will not hurt you. All right, so we got five and a half, five point six 5.6 volts positive there. So again, pay attention to your red lead on your voltmeter. Keep track of that wire. Now if you pay attention to your wires, most cabling will have a marker on one wire and nothing on the other. Now take your USB cable, like I said this one's just an old iPhone lightning cable or whatever they call it that I do not use anymore. There is a damage section right here so I'm going to go ahead and cut on the plug side of that here. 
Now I've never been inside an iPhone proprietary USB cable, but typically there are four cables. You do need to be incredibly gentle here because you don't want to cut any of those. Now this is a main brand USB cable. You can find schematics online that show the standard that USB cables are made in. If memory serves me correctly, the red and white are what you're after. But, again, we've got our voltmeter here. We can figure out exactly what we have. Gently remove the insulation. Twist the cabling so it doesn't fray up on you. Now online there are, you can find the specifications or the schematics of how a standard USB cable is powered, um, as in which color corresponds to positive, negative, data transfer, stuff like that. But because so much is made in China and various places all over the world, people cut corners or companies cut corners and you can't guarantee that they're going to hold to the standard. So go ahead and strip all four wires and make sure to keep them separate. Just bend them to the side where they're not touching each other. Go ahead and plug your cable in and go back to your voltmeter. It's over here where you guys can see. Okay. So it looks like we're working with red and black, which is base, which is the standard for positive and negative. Red positive, black negative. Go ahead and unplug so you don't short it, short it out. Trim up your cables. Trim them up, and there you go. So now we know that red's positive, black's negative, and that the black with the white stripe is positive, and just plain black is negative over here. So what we want to do is create a system where this plug-in will work with both the AC adapter and the USB adapter. And that, my friends, is where these little bullet connectors come in. You're going to need six. Okay guys, this part is simple. You want to take the two wires that power is going to be coming from, so you want the USB and the AC wall adapter end. You want to take one of the female bullet connectors and attach it to the positive lead. And simply crimp that on. You're going to want a good, tight crimp or crush. Kind of tug on it to make sure it's nice and secure. The wire is really thin, so don't pull too hard or it'll, it will come apart and break. Do the same for your other power source. Now, take a male, a male bullet connection and go ahead and crimp it on. Now take your plug side. That goes to your whatever device you're setting this up for. You are going to want to put the male end, this is exactly the opposite of what we just did, put the male end on the positive lead. Give it a tug. Put the female bullet connector on the negative. Obviously the setting has changed here just a little bit. Um, I didn't end up having the stuff in hand to finish up this video, so this is the next day. I apologize, guys. Anyway, what you're going to want um, is some heat shrink tubing and a little bit of hot glue. Um, they do make heat shrink tubing with uh, a hot glue type uh, compound on the inside of it. Uh, Lowe's was out, so I'm just kind of making do. Because these, these cables are so tiny, um, they pull out really easily, and these male and female uh, connections they seat together extremely well so sometimes it can be kind of hard to pull them apart and because these are so small it'd be easy to break these connections so this is what we're going to do to kind of alleviate that let's cut off a little bit of hot glue just cut off some really thin longish slivers it doesn't take much to get this done Just kind of eyeball a measurement of how much heat shrink tubing you're going to need. Go ahead and slip it on. 
shove a little bit of hot glue up in there. This hot glue is not so much for weatherproofing, although that is a nice bonus. The point here today is for it to kind of meld or glue the heat shrink tubing to those tiny cables, to, just to give it some strength. And make sure that you come down past the bottom of this mail end. Now be sure to move the heat around. If you let it sit too much in one place, it will melt through that heat shrink tubing. As you can see, it's melting that hot glue. So as you can see, it's nice and stiff now. So breaking the, these tiny wires, the chances of that has gone down exponentially. Now I will say guys, fair warning, the rest of this video is going to show some electrician's tape on these ends. I just, uh, unfortunately I didn't have the heat shrink tubing to get this done. And now we're ready to hook it up. Get them in there nice and secure. And now, you've turned an AC adapter into a USB adapter. Okay guys, well here's my camera battery. And here we are hooked up. The cool thing about this is, and my design purpose for today, this has got 18,200 milliamp hours, and this battery has only 4,200 milliamp hours. And uh, for, you, for you guys out there who make videos for YouTube and other places, you know that even though this is an extended battery, it goes pretty quick. Alright guys, well there you have it. An extremely cheap way if you use the materials you already have, the USB cable, the AC adapter. It costs you about two and a half bucks for those bullet connections at uh, Auto Parts Store or wherever you choose to get them. And in this purpose, powering the camera I'm filming with off a of backup power supply. So if you're in need or looking for an alternative power for, you know, your kids' toys, you know, whether N Nintendo, whatever, or Leapfrog, Explorer, whatever it is they have nowadays, this is a quick, easy, cheap option for you. Take you about five minutes, and you're done. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for being here today. I do truly appreciate it. If you'd go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would appreciate that as well. Guys, please, if you'd like to continue to see stuff like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, go ahead and hit up the comment section as well. Let me know what you think. Let me know of other options out there. Maybe there's a device out there that'll fit this need. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for being here today, and I'll see you next time.